Now for some information on Vector 3. We're going to start looking at moving around our objects. So that's involving the transform component and Vector 3s. Okay, so when we start, even with an empty game object, as I described before, there is a special relationship between a game object and a transform. Basically, one cannot exist without the other in Unity. But the transform is a component of the game object. So let's look that up. We'll go to the Unity scripting reference, type in transform. There's going to be a lot of information on transform. We're looking at the basics and vector threes. Let's start by looking at the position. The position of the transform in world space. Okay, what is a vector three and how does that translate to that? Okay, if we look at a little widget up in the top right hand corner of our scene view. We can see some axes being defined in world space. If I bring back my grid, there. So a vector three is giving a three-part coordinate. Okay, it's giving us three values for each one of these axes. So we have the x, we have the y component. the Y variable, beg your pardon, and we have the Z variable. Okay, so that's basically what a vector 3 is trying to define. It's giving values, well it, it contains three values. Okay, a vector 3 will contain three values. And normally they relate to our axes in world space. For the transform. So let's make a script so we can show some examples here. So this will be my vector 3 example. Open that up in your script editor. So if we want to modify the transform component, we have the position variable of a transform component. Let's look at that. So if we look at our transform, yes, we have a position variable, a rotation variable, and a scale variable. And all of these are vector threes. They have three values in each of one of these. So again, to access the position variable of the transform component, we use dot position, and then we have to assign a vector 3. So let's try that. First I'm going to create a variable so that I can modify the vector 3 in the inspector while we're running and we can see how that's being used. So that's variable, my vector 3, and this is of type vector 3. And I won't assign anything, so I'm going to assign that in the inspector. Okay, and then from the script reference, we look at transform dot position equals, and we're just going to assign the vector three that I set in the inspector. Okay, so let's see that work. Let that compile out. Let's just rename everything. I'm even going to save this as a scene. Okay, so we've renamed everything. Let's bring our Vector 3 example script up. And as you can see in the inspector, we have that public variable that I just declared. And there are our three different values that go into our variable. So let's see this work. So if I hit play, 
we're telling our transform position to be at this vector. So let's modify a few things. Let's make this. There we go. You can see that running around. We have our y. And we have our z. So quite simply, there you go. Accessing the transform component and accessing the position variable of the transform component and assigning a vector 3 to that variable. So we can use a vector 3 to define a position. Now there are two different ways of defining position. We can talk about world space at this whole world here and that's what we've been doing here so far. We are setting the position in the world space. So the Y is always up on the real world Y the Z is always forward in the real world Z. Let's bring in another object. Instead of that being an empty game object, you can see how the transform component needs to exist with a game object, and a game object needs to exist, so I can get rid of that. I'll set our cube to zero. This will be our reference. Now, we just talked about world space. This is world space when we're moving an object around and using these vector threes here. This is defining a world space. What if we want to talk about a position in relation to another object? Let's put our vector 3 example on the sphere. We hit play. So we still have the same things there. Now watch as I move the cube. So the cube is now going to go to 5 on the X. And I'm going to put a 5 on the Z as well. Now, even though the sphere is a child of the cube, we are setting its position in world space. So you see, even as I say here, okay, so this is showing us in world space at the moment. Now what if we wanted to assign a position in relation to another object? Instead of position, let's use local position. Stop everything, let it compile, let start. Okay, so we have our cube and we have our sphere. So let's set the local position. Currently, it doesn't look like anything else is happening there. It's not much different going on, is there? In my previous example, let's set the position of the cube. Okay, as you can see, now instead of the sphere staying where it was, it's moved in relation to the cube. Now, this is what's termed called local space. Okay, we're assigning a position in relation to our parent. So even though we've said vector 300, okay, vector 300 is back here. So the sphere is not sitting at zero, it's sitting at zero in relation to its parent, the cube. Okay, to get it back to the real world, zero, zero, we'd have to set an offset. Okay, so that's vector 3 as a position, and a position that is relative to world space or relative to local space. Ah, because we're modifying, I can't drag that around because we're running the script. Or we can set variable vector 3 as a local position. 